On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Iran three-peats tanker seizures. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So a third tanker was seized over the weekend by Iran. This goes hand in hand with two previous seizures. Now, what I'm going to do today is talk about the third seizure, but also try to put in context the first two, because there's a lot of misinformation about there, and there's a lot of details that are not really breaking to the surface on it. And also, what is the reaction to these seizures by entities like the United States? If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this story. So here's the Lloyd's report on this uh, by Toma Rennan. Iran claims another tanker seizure as U.S. Navy set to increase presence in the Strait of Hormuz. Iranian media reported on Friday the 9,300 deadweight ton product tanker purity had been seized by the IRGC, that's the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, after it was, quote, illegally leased to a foreigner. Uh, this story over in Maritime Executive, which also discusses this, has that specific announcement here on it. Uh, the purity was illegally rented to a foreign individual with forfeited documents about five years ago, and its Iranian owners were deprived of their interests, according to the report in Iranian media. They are reporting that last month a judicial order was issued for the return of the vessel, and the IRGC acted along with the Ministry of Intelligence in carrying out the seizure. So Iran is basically arguing that this vessel is being returned back to their owner. So they're not seizing the vessel for any illegal activity, but for it being illegally sold out from the control of the original owner. And understand, vessels can be arrested. Nations have the power to arrest vessels. If there is a legal document filed in court, ships can be held and arrested. We saw that, for example, with Ever Given in the Suez two years ago when Ever Given was freed from the Suez. It was arrested by the Egyptians and held in the Great Bitter Lake, the lake in the middle of the Suez Canal, for nearly a hundred days. So, so nations have that power to do it. The question is the legality of the case that's levied against them. If you go and look at Purity, this is from Ship Tracker. The ship had sailed from Mundra in India and was sailing into the, the region of the Persian Gulf. It was right in the Persian Gulf area. Specifically, the ship was heading to uh, Fujairah in the United Arab Emirates. And the ship seems to operate in and around this area. So the ship was in the vicinity of the Persian Gulf when it was seized by the IRGC, sailed into the Persian Gulf, uh, excuse me, it was in the Gulf of Oman and sailed into the Persian Gulf through the Strait of Hormuz. And now it is located in that southern Iranian port. If you go over to Equus, uh, Equus lists the ship's history here. And I pulled up two areas, the name of the ship, which has changed repeatedly from Purity to Sun Ocean to Genius Sun uh, to a whole batch of names. But if you look at registry, it's also changed from Panama to St. Vincent's to Marshall Islands to Singapore. Not unusual for ships to jump registry, but according to the claim by Iranian state media about five years ago, which would have put it after this period when it was registered in Panama and one of the ship names here to the purity would be when it was basically seized. Now, all of this happens in conjunction with two previous tanker seizures. One was the ship, the Advantage Suite. Uh, this was a Marshall Island flag vessel sailing out of Kuwait with a load of oil for Chevron heading to Houston, Texas. Now, there are allegations that that oil wasn't Kuwaiti. It may have been Syrian oil. I don't know. I, I just don't know where that oil came from. But there was a seizure by the Iranians of this vessel. And when I say seizure, I do mean seizure. Because they literally fast roped from SH-3 Sea King helicopters onto the deck of the vessel and ordered the vessel to divert from its passage out of the Strait of Hormuz uh, in the Gulf of Oman back into the Strait of Hormuz and anchor just off Bandar Abbas. And then there was a second seizure, and this was the seizure of, of another vessel. This is the Niovi, 
which was seized. And this one was caught by U.S. surveillance drones, photographed. And this tanker, which was in ballast, and ballast means it was empty. It was coming out of a shipyard in the Persian Gulf from the UAE, heading over to a port off the coast of uh, the UAE or Oman, when it was diverted back to Iran, and it too is in an anchorage just north of Bandar Abbas. The crew over at Tanker Trackers was able to grab these images here, and I will remove my big head so you can see it, right where these vessels are being held. Now, the background on the two seizures is a lot different. Uh, there's an argument here about why these ships are seized. So the first vessel, the Advantage Suite, the argument was this was in retaliation to the U.S. diverting a tanker known as the Suez Rajan. The Suez Rajan, a Marshall Island flag tanker, was off the east coast of Madagascar when it disappeared off the AIS on April 21st. It has not pinged since. So this ship has gone dark. It has disappeared. And the argument that Iran says is this ship, which was loaded with Iranian oil, was diverted by the company at the request of the U.S. The belief is this ship is going to the United States to offload its cargo. Uh, and so the Advantage Suite with an American load of oil, also a Panamanian, uh, excuse me, a Marshall Island flag vessel, was grabbed in retaliation to that. So what you have here is a tit for tat. The United States ordered the diversion of Suez Rajan. The Iranians seize uh, advantage suite. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just telling you this is what happened in those two cases. In the case of the second tanker, the Neovi, we have this great report also by Tomer over at Lloyd's where the seized tanker was part of a legal dispute with sanctioned entities over suspected Iranian cargo. And I'll have this entire story in the show notes. It is a great one. Tomer went into some detail here, finding out that basically the issue here had to do with the sale of a cargo out of this tanker back in 2020, where the beneficial cargo owners were never reimbursed for it. And so the issue is the cargo was sold, money was was gained by the company that sold it, but didn't get back to the beneficial cargo owners. And so that was the dispute. And now the ship is basically being held liable for that that is the reason that the Iranians are giving for the seizure of this vessel. And what Tomer had been able to do is really piece this story together. And it's a great story. You really should read it. It is on Lloyd's, but it's outside their paywall. So you can actually read this story. And it is a really interesting one that is put out there. It really gives you a little background on the, the intricacies of ocean shipping. So the U.S. responds to the fact now that a third tanker has been seized. And one of the things that they're talking about is the U.S. is planning more robots at sea in the Middle East to combat Iran. So this is one of their sail drone explorers. These are one of the drones that literally sails. And I say sails. It's literally wind power sails and monitors. It has radar. It detects uh, vessels and it's used for visual determination. The U.S. has an entire task force, Task Force 59, in the Persian Gulf that are operating a slew of unmanned vessels. And these are just one of the types. <laughs> However, I will mention there, there is a slight problem with these drones. Uh, and, and that came to <laughs> came to light uh, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago when an Iranian vessel basically hooked a line and started towing away one of these drones. This is an Iranian vessel. This is one of the sail drones at the end of a tow rope. Uh, being uh, towed away. This story in G Captain, Iran busted trying to steal U.S. Navy sea drone. Uh, Mike Schiller back in August. Now, Iran eventually released this drone and let it go. But this is one of the problems with unmanned drones and using a lot of unmanned drones in the area is they're great, they're fantastic, but you, you can't really defend them and nothing stops you from hooking a line to them and sailing away with them or just running them down and just destroying them, which will be the other aspect that I think you'll have. But the U.S. is talking about putting more of these in. And matter of fact, one of the things you're seeing is legislation introduced in Congress, what's called the Maritime Act of 2023. Both the House and Senate have introduced this act into Congress. H.R. 2973 is the House version. They're, they're, they're the same bill, but they're in committee right now. So they haven't gone anywhere. But basically what this act, act talks about is right here 
a Middle East integrated maritime domain awareness and interdiction capability. The Secretary of Defense, in conjunction with the Secretary of State, shall so seek to build upon the historic opportunities created by the Abraham. Abraham Accords and the incorporation of Israel into the area responsibility of the United States Central Command to develop a Mideast integrated maritime domain awareness and interdiction capability for the purpose of protecting the people, infrastructure, and territory of such countries from, and it talks about manned, unmanned naval systems, undersea warfare capabilities, and anti-ship missiles of Iran and groups affili affiliated with Iran and violent extremist organizations, criminal networks, and piracy activities that threaten lawful commerce in the waterways within the area of the responsibility of the United States Naval Forces Central Command. Understand, several entities of the Iranian government have been identified as terrorist organizations. And so this would give the Central Command the authority to basically counter them. Uh, this could lead to a undeclared naval war in the Persian Gulf against certain elements of the Iranian government. Now, Iran would counter that saying that it already exists, that we're already seeing that, but this would be the actual legislation that will do it. Uh, I should note that all three vessels are being held. Uh, the crews are reported well. Uh, last time Iran seized tankers, they, they seized two Greek tankers last year. They allowed those crews to rotate on and off the vessel. They were fed. There was no problems with the crews. This is just an issue with the ships and the cargoes. And so it, it's not as easy to sit there and blanket the three vessels that Iran have grabbed because all three of them have a different issue. The, the advantage suite is in retaliation to Suez Rajan. The Niovi has to do with a legal case about the selling of Iranian oil and not getting the money for it. And then the case now of the most recent one talks about the issue that this ship was illegally sold and now Iran is claiming it back. This is the mess that is international shipping and it is a mess usually and you're getting it right now. So I, I don't know how much this is pure Iran doing nasty things or illegal things, or this is just nations around the world do this all the time, and it gets a lot of press. But you're seeing it played out right now. The interesting thing is to see is what is the reaction of the U.S. government and other governments to this, because the free flow of oil and petroleum out of the Persian Gulf has to happen, because a lot of nations depend on that for their energy. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, Share it across social media. Give it a thumbs up. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit the super thanks button down below where you can contribute directly to the page or head on over to Patreon. You'll see a link at the end or in the show notes and you can become a monthly or yearly patron of the page. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.